Welcome back to American Republic. Uh, I didn't have time to mention this, though it's on your uh, packet information. You guys have a homework assignment, pages 211 to 212 in your activities book. Uh, it's basically a, a narration of Jackie Robinson breaking baseball's color barrier. So I want you to read that uh, story the real life story and then answer the uh, seven questions on page 212 that was assigned well that's being assigned today it was meant to be assigned yesterday but you're all turning it in at the same time anyways when the packets do on monday so let's continue we're at roman numeral two the post-war world as world war ii came to a close talks for a new peacekeeping organization grew on April 25th, 1945, Truman welcomed delegates from 50 nations to San Francisco. The result of the conference was the United Nations. The United Nations is an international peacekeeping organization with its headquarters in New York City. John D. Rockefeller um, Jr. gave $8.5 million and the U.S. loaned the U.N. another $65 million dollars uh, to get it going. The new headquarters opened in 1952. There are three parts to the United Nations. Number one, uh, there's the General Assembly, which is the, the representative body of all member nations. The General Assembly lets the member nations discuss their problems peacefully and reach nonviolent agreements. As of now, there are 193 countries represented in the General Assembly, but the General Assembly has little power because member nations are not forced to abide by its decisions. Number two, the Security Council includes five permanent members of the U.S., United Kingdom, France, China, and Russia who hold veto power, and then ten non-permanent members. The latter are elected by the General Assembly for two-year terms and are usually drawn from the smaller countries. The Security Council is the strongest part of the UN because it has the power to enforce UN policy with military action. But the key is if one of the big five countries veto in any decision, it is automatically rejected. So if there's a decision and Russia doesn't like it, they veto it, then even though everyone else wanted it, it's going to be rejected. And then number three is the Secretariat. This is the executive branch of the UN uh, that it handles the daily affairs of the UN. It's headed by the Secretary General. And now you see finally uh, the picture on top, the picture of uh, the flag of the United Nations. And by the way, the Secretary General is elected by the General Assembly. Letter B, post-war Europe. What was Europe like after World War II? Well, Germany was divided into four sectors. They wanted to make sure that Germany never would become powerful again and threaten Europe again like they did after World War I. And so it was divided into four regions, four sectors, American-controlled, British, French, and Soviet control. The Soviets occupied the eastern sector and ensured its economy and politics would be communist. Tensions increased between the U.S. and the Soviet Union during this time. Europe had been devastated by war. There were no jobs. National debts had gone up and industries, farmlands, roads, and railroads had been destroyed. The fear was that communism would spread to Europeans who had no hope in life. And so, the U.S. decided to act. First, it sent food, clothing, and medicine to Europe. Then, it sent money. The Secretary of State, George Marshall, created what became conveniently named the Marshall Plan, and it gave huge sums of money to rebuild European countries. Sorry about that uh, grammar error. It shouldn't say Europeans countries, just European countries. 
The Marshall Plan even offered to aid Eastern European countries that were already subjected to Soviet control, but the Soviet Union, for some reason, rejected the offer. It would not allow its satellites, uh, Soviet-dominated countries, to take advantage of the offer, even though some of these countries desperately needed and wanted it. Uh, the map that you see here shows you a close-up view, or shows you a graphic view of of the amount of money that was given uh, by the Marshall Plan for these efforts. You see Britain has the most, France has a good chunk, Italy, uh, West Germany as it will be called, as well as the other countries pictured there. In the end, the plan cost more than $12 billion. As a result, it greatly aided European recovery. The countries that received American assistance rebounded quickly and soon surpassed their pre-war production. But the Soviet-dominated countries remained in economic despair for decades and never matched the progress of the free countries. Letter C. Japan. What about Japan now? Japan had been decimated by the war, and the U.S. took sole responsibility for its recovery. After all, it was the U.S. that dropped the atomic bombs on Japan. It was the U.S. who had instituted uh, well, martial law on Japan after the war. And so the U.S. alone will be the country responsible for helping it to recover. Let's see how it does. Cities and harbors lay in ruin, and the Japanese merchant fleet had been sunk. Douglas MacArthur was placed in charge to supervise recovery efforts. Along with supervising the government and healing the economy, MacArthur, concerned about religion, said, Japan is a spiritual vacuum. If you do not fill it with Christianity, it will be filled with communism. He called on American Christians to send a thousand missionaries to Japan. Between 1946 and 1950, more than 2,000 missionaries, teachers, and social workers went to Japan to help the country recover. The door to Japan was open to the gospel. What was the end result? Japan quickly rebuilt, established a democracy, created a thriving industrial nation, and became a strong ally of the U.S. The Japanese elected a legislative body and gave rights to all citizens. Women received the right to vote, finally. In 1951, the U.S. ended its military occupation of Japan. That's all the material that we're going to cover for today, so this is a nice shorter video. Um, Make sure you do the homework on Jackie Robinson that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Also, maybe draw a line in your notes or do what you need to know do to know that you have a quiz. So please make sure that you take the Chapter 24 quiz today. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.